Are we recording or are we live? Yeah, we're recording. We're recording right now. All right. All right. All right. For sure. What's going on, people? Welcome to a new video on the incredible podcast. Uh, we've got Lil B here. This is What's quite up? this is quite surreal to be honest, mate. It's um it's uh I mean I've been following you for years since I started uh tattooing. I think like we was talking earlier off camera, we was um I was saying about YouTube and stuff like that, and you were probably one of the first ones to do that, weren't you? Yeah, I mean I mean like when I started YouTube and I checked, I mean it was a, a while back, bro, and back then there was nobody that was an active tattooer that would do like YouTube video with consistency. So you might have had like one or two interviews or maybe some like clips of someone tattooing, but there is nobody that was like, yo, I'm a hop on YouTube and, and go like full time with that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's, um, it's definitely one My of the ones, it's, it's one of them ones that's, uh, it's quite, it, it, it was kind of like a life goal for me to get you on a podcast. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you coming, man. Good. Um, so, how was COVID for you, bro? What it happened was with that? It, 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 the, the whole situation was a little bit strange, bro, because I was in France during COVID, and and um, the rules here were like super strict. So we we weren't allowed to get out. Like literally, we had to fill in a an application on the phone, and you were allowed to be only half a mile around your house for an hour, and you you only wow. had like three ways to get out i think it was like groceries or help someone in danger yeah and walk your dog you know so for me i spent a lot of time alone i was pretty much stuck in the house for two months yeah how long didn't you work for you weren't allowed to work were you? I, I didn't work for i'll say like like didn't work at all for at, at least two months yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't work like if as far as tattooing, but I I kept it moving, you know. So I was working, but just not tattooing. Yeah. And then it extended for a while, bro. Like for more than six months, I I was tattooing, but not on my regular schedule because the borders of France were closed. So for black and gray tattooing, I'll say ninety percent or ninety five percent of my clientele is North American. So yeah. they were they weren't allowed in the territory. So yeah, like I was the, chill. Yeah, the. Uh... The airports were just shut, weren't they? It was crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't How about for, you, bro? I How about work, you? I didn't work for eight months. I didn't work. I, I, I mean, I mean, I had like savings and stuff, but um, that all went really quickly because uh, it's quite expensive here to live in London. So it was, um, it was just one of them where, like, you got a bit of help from the government and stuff, but it wasn't a lot. It wasn't great, but um, yeah. And then yeah. I found as well, when I went back to tattooing, because I didn't literally tattoo anything for eight months. And when I went back to tattooing, I was like, I felt like I've like my hand couldn't move in a in a way. It was, it was really strange. I had to like kind of relearn my, my hand muscles to, to tattoo. Again. Really? Yeah, it's weird. So weird. Bro, like for me, it's so strange. I feel sometimes when I take them long break from tattooing, like, Get I get better actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's super refreshing. But I mean, I I never stopped for eight months at a time, bro. I mean, shit. For me, like, yeah, I I have to tattoo, bro. I'll I'll got them tattoo my leg if I have to, <laughs> you know. But I think I did a couple of fake fake skin pieces. To be fair, um, right? I, did, I I did a fifty cent piece, which was quite cool, and that came out well. Cool. But, <clears throat> but yeah, it was um. It's definitely a tough time, I think, for the whole industry going through that. Um, so yeah, for sure. Where did you? How did you start tattooing? Like, what was your, what was your like your start place? Where did you? Did you start in France? Because I've seen you travel in your YouTube. So explain to yeah. us where where you you started, like the, the so, start of your journey. So when I turned eighteen years old, I moved to USA to California. Really? You know, nice. yeah. 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 So when I was there, it was it was a little complicated, bro. I, I can, you know, what I'm saying like I cannot get, you know, due to some know legal issues, I cannot really get into oh, too okay. many details. But pretty much, like I w I had to hustle and stuff, and my whole life I was drawing, you know, and and eventually the opportunity to start tattooing was there in front of me, and this is how I started, you know, in my apartment, and eventually someone took me under their wing and. Yeah. And I started tattooing like this in the States. Oh, sick. Cool. Yeah. In in California? Yes. 
So you started just like, ta- it, it, do you know what the the regulations are over there for like tattooing? Can you just tattoo anywhere? Because in here in the UK, you have to have a licensed studio. Yeah, I mean, bro, like wh- when I when I started, I mean, it was none of my concern, bro. Was, yeah, I, yeah. I was literally like living in the just ghetto, you know. Hustling, so yeah. it, it was just out there where I was living. Everybody and their grandmas was a tattooist, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, you could literally like get a goddamn tattoo for 20 bucks you know everybody will like tattoo in their garage so yeah that's how i figured like when my friend got a some some fucked up tattoos i was like oh if this guy that tattooed him can do it and and is is sort of like making a living from this and i had passion passion for drawing because i was draw, drawing every day regardless really? of whether t- i was a tattooist or not i was like maybe i should get into it it's only like when i start to get a little bit more uh, established that I started to learn about like uh, bloodborne, um, pathogens, you know, stuff, like yeah. all these like laws and regulation, and eventually I things got straighter for me in that sense. Yeah. Do you think um, com- coming into someone coming into this industry? Do you think you have to be able to draw to be a tattooist, or do you think you can I mean, pick it up? Because because I can't draw. I can't draw. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it helps, you know, but it it all depends what you're doing, you know. It, yeah. it all depends what type of tattooing you're trying to do, you know. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, now tattoo has evolved so much. I mean, it's like crazy. Sometimes I, I see some, some, some stuff. I'm like amazed how you can have a stencil machine that straight up yeah prints prints the the picture as it yeah. is. And I mean, pretty much at that point, you just become a pure craftsman where you just have to know how to copy a picture you see based on a blueprint that's already identical so yeah uh it's it's more about like craftsmanship and there's nothing wrong with this you know i mean i I just feel like there there is different um layers of tattooing of categories you know now if tomorrow you're trying to do some um japanese work or neo-traditional or maybe some stuff that that has nothing to do with realism it's better to know how to draw because if not, you're just going to be able to copy other people's work by stenciling it. Yeah. So it depends what you're trying to do, you know? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think the stencil phase is definitely one of the most important parts of, of tattooing, I think. Um, and like you said, there's 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 these print, printers that will print out the whole picture. And it's like, it kind of takes the kind of takes the skill of it out, I suppose, because like for me, I think I, I don't pick out everything I want in a tattoo. I, I leave some bits out for my style, if you know what I mean. Um, but you've got a really interesting uh, style yourself. So how would you describe your style? Would you would you describe it as stippling? Or is it like fine? Uh, bro, I just like recently, like during COVID came out with a, uh, cause actually like I, I didn't know like really what, uh, I guess like my style was like everybody used. So basically bro, when I started to do like I guess like you can call stippling or, or I guess now they call like three RL. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a thing, man. You know, the only person that I knew of that was doing this, his name is James Spencer Briggs. And yes. He's very, and yeah, you know, he's like pretty he's underground, so bro. Yeah. He, he's not that well, well known still. He's, he's still pretty. He's not bro. I mean, like to, to, to me, I mean, th- he is the guy that like originally like inspired me with this. Wow. Basically like w- what happened is that I was trying to tattoo like everybody else, but it was just not cutting it for me, you know? Yeah. And then I was overusing the liners, you know? And then eventually when I saw that this guy was like mostly doing that too, that opened the door for me to just go full blown with it. And I, I think I contributed to take that thing to the next level, you know, because yeah. back then, I mean, as far as, as I knew, it was like either some uh, people in prison or like some people that didn't have real tattoo machines that yeah. had like homemade tattoo machines that were used a lot of single needle because they had no options and they knew nothing better than that. So it was for a lack of option. Or then there is James Spencer Briggs that was like just doing straight up thing. killing it yeah doing it on purpose and then when i saw that i was like all right i'm gonna run with it and that's when i really like went crazy with it without ever thinking like stippling without now people put some hashtag three rl but really i mean for me i wasn't thinking about this for me it was just like i'm tattooing i'm just using what's convenient for me and what is getting me where i want my work to look like but now yeah. that pin i pinpoint 
uh, what I will call my style is I will say like bold, fine line, black and gray. Bold, fine line. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, nice. I think um, <clears throat> that that's funny you brought him up to be fair because um, I saw his tattoos when I first started probably eight, nine years ago now and um, I think it was a full sleeve. There was like a shark in there. Then in the shark's mouth, yeah. there's like a swallow. It's was, it was so sick. I loved how he, he layered, layered everything to still make it flow, but there was no like direction to it. It's just random bits and bobs, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. I know exactly what sleeve you yeah. talk about. I mean, I, I studied this guy closely. I mean, he's, uh, he, he is amazing, bro. Like, I, yeah. I think he's one of these artists that don't really care about having um, the spotlight on him. And yeah. It just it just crushes it on the low, you know. Yeah, yeah, and people that know what what it takes to to do that style is, uh, I think, regards him very highly. Like like you said, he's like one yeah. of your main inspirations, isn't he? Yeah, man. I mean, like he. How did you I, I learn? He, like, how did you learn? How how did you learn to to know what to do when when you went through? with that style like when like your your style now is kind of like influenced from him so how how did you know what needles to use how did you like you, you said you studied him i think like for me I, I probably have a different approach uh from you like than you like from for like as far as studying because yeah i think like you really like study people you know you look at the hand motions the videos you try to understand what they're using and whatnot but for me it's not really like that it was more it just opened the door for me to to accept to like embrace the fact that i wanted to use only liner needles at that time of my life yeah and i i didn't really care about what configuration of needles he's using what you know i, I wasn't trying to copy him i was no, just yeah. it was more like inspirational you know yeah and yeah, like a... so i used whatever i went through a phase where at first i was only using single needles yeah. and then eventually i was like yo this is Single needles is dope, but for larger scale work, I mean, it takes a long time. And I knew some people that were getting tatted by him and he was taking a outrageous amount of time to complete projects, you know? And I was yeah. like, I I'm more like trying to get people in and out. I want to get a lot of work done, you know, while I'm tattooing. Yeah. So that's when I started to move to like three tights, you know, and it, it, tights, yeah. it worked better for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what, so getting into like your, your setup, um what needles do you use to create your your work um obviously three round liners right tight tight three round liners yeah yeah bro like once again this is kind of i'm pretty changing bro you know so yeah. you ask me this and then you ask me this in six months so, it'd probably yeah. be a different story but uh, what are you using right, right now, now yeah right now bro like I, i've been doing half black and gray, half uh, Japanese work, you know. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I've been doing a lot of Japanese tattooing. You yeah. Know? It's been one of my uh, main focus these days. And and um, I've been using so much mags, you know, in Japanese work, bro. Like, um, at, at first, I wanted to do Japanese work with, sing like, with the, you know, liner needles. Yeah. But I, I, I've been doing such big works that I was like, yo, it's too much, too much time, you know. So yeah. I started to become very familiar with mags bro and now i started to include way more mag work in my black and gray you know yeah yeah so i always have a three tight that is my main that's that's my baby right there you know i, I do most things with it but I, I i usually will have like a 9 or 11 mag or a 15 mag on the side okay what well, so is that like um is that bug pin or is that like a standard gauge so i think it's 0 0.35 is a standard gauge and 0 0.30 is a so I'm, I, I don't know about the zero point something. I know that I use curved Tight. mag that are yeah. medium taper. Okay, medium taper. That's that's interesting yeah. to know. That's interesting to know. Is yes. there a reason so, for that? Just because it goes in better? The ink. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to try some long taper because yeah. I recently got on board with a, a cartridge brand that at the at that point, they, they told me like, oh, we, don't ha we ran out of medium taper, so we're going to send you some long taper. But for the most part, bro, like I like long taper for liners. But for mags, I just want to fucking punch it and be in and out quick, you know. Yeah. But my true. whole goal is to do work that looks solid, you know. Yeah. Like not, I, I don't really tattoo for a picture, you know. I tattoo for the heels, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So like for me, I, I'm always thinking if it's a bigger hole, the ink goes in faster, and you don't have to overwork the skin. <laughs> so that's why I like medium tapers a lot. Just turn my mic up a bit. 
All right. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, long taper, you've got, like, when you're using long taper, you've got, <clears throat> I think long taper is really uh, directed at people that layer it up slowly because um, it's less trauma to the skin, but medium taper, yeah, for, for those watching is 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 a is a lot more, well, it's not a lot more, but it's, it's harsher on the skin, so you've got l less passes, but it gets the ink in quicker. Um, yeah, so that's v very, very interesting. What to about know. you? You use long taper, you know? Yeah, I use, so my setup is, I use quadrant needles. I think they're just the best needles you can get. Um, mm. And I use a sublime, the sublime ones because i think f for me a good needle is is where you're you're working and when you've got a cartridge needle if there's space between where the needle comes out of the cartridge if it's wobbling around you're not gonna ha have it um you're not gonna create like a, a super precise piece unless you're using like a liner or something like that something something that's um super tight and you you've got a lot more control over um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I use I use long long taper needles, um, curve mags, um, and there's a few there's a few um, sizes in there. I've got a, a nine curve mag, and it's all zero point three zero, so it's a bug pin. Um, and I use a nine, a 11, 17, and a twenty five, and then I'll use a seven round shader. Um, and what else will I use? I'll probably go in with like a medium taper three round liner as well. Mm. so i see but it's, i mean yeah so 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 when when you do your so like on this screen which you can't see but i've got a picture of your work and mm -hmm. um it looks like you've stippled and then you've magged over it is that one of the things that you do do you, do you stipple and use the the mag shading to smooth it out a bit or not I mean, to me, it's not really to like smooth it out, but it's to make it like more dense, you know? Yeah. Because I, I think a lot of people out there that, bro, I mean, it is a lot of work that looks very nice on, on picture on internet, you know? But when you see in person the work in real life, you know, and it's not to throw anybody under a train or something, but there is a lot of guys there, their name is pretty big and... I'll get to tattoo some of their customers because, yeah. you know, some collectors or whatnot. And when you see the work, it looks so, it's so flat. weak. Yeah, you know? flat. Like all, yeah, all so, one shade. So, yeah. So for me, I think it's important to bring density and Magnum sometimes will pack. Like you can get like extreme density just with liners. But I think to get extreme density just with liners, you got to really have layers so it, it means like you you probably need to let it heal once and hit it again and whatnot you know yeah but if you have a mag sometimes you can fuck fucking got them pack Punch it in, in bro yeah. you know and and so if you have all your nice structure uh, with all your different gradients and 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 details and everything is sharp with your liner and you come back in with a mag and you just like make sure that that thing is solid, you feel me? Yeah, man. So so what ink do you use? Do you use dynamic or? Or are we talking for black and gray or are we talking in general? Yeah. Black well, and gray. Is this a black and gray only conversation right now? Or? You can, we, can, we can talk <laughs> colors because obviously Jap uh, Japanese style tattooing is, is very colorful, isn't it? It's vibrant. So what yeah. inks do you use for color and then what inks do you use for black and gray? So for, for black and gray, I use dynamic. Yeah, I use dynamic, uh, and I tend to use the dynamic triple black for the blacks. You know, same as me. For yeah. Japanese, I cannot say what black I'm using because it was a secret that's passed on. You know, okay, that yeah, I, yeah, that's fine, that's cool. It's man. it's a, it's very different. You know, it's it was given to me from a person in Japan. Yeah. The the gray wash, I cannot share it either, bro, because <laughs> it was passed on to me. It's it's a, it's a whole different world of tattooing. You know, for yeah. for this. Uh, for Japanese tattooing mm -hmm. and for the colors I use a lot of uh, I think it's Dermaglow I believe they're from the UK okay uh, so they're so, very good colors so will you tell me the secret off camera I this one bro I really can't tell because if the guy that's for whatever reason He's tunes in and it's, yeah. yeah bro like uh, I'm starting a war out there in when I return in Japan bro nah that's cool man that's cool some things you just have to keep to yourself you know yeah, man, I don't mind. Like, I mean, you've been following me for a minute, so you know that I don't mind sharing, you know, yeah, know my man, work man. and stuff. But the moment someone tells me something and you say, okay, I, I tell you, but 
in the condition that you don't share it then yeah yeah that's that's fair enough so because you moved out to japan didn't you yeah i'm in between uh france and japan what now I'm still in between france yes uh well yeah i was i actually returned to france maybe two three months ago yeah and and like right now i'm in france i'm handling a lot of work here and yeah yeah you know so i'm in france for a minute but i don't know i'm, I'm probably gonna return to japan in october november you know i'm yeah. also like working I, I'm, I have to return to canada too because I, I do a lot of work out there what in toronto yes that's yeah, sick. i i have so much love out there and i have one of my best friends that live out there that's originally from there so yeah mad man where where do you work in japan is it just like just guessing around do you still like tra like travel like how you did before? Because on your YouTube channel, you were like, sometimes you, like I saw you sleeping under like bridges and stuff. Yeah, Crazy. man. Um, I, I, I used to have a house, a pretty big house in Japan mm -hmm. that I was, wor I was working from my house mm -hmm. and eventually I got rid of the house. So right now I'm, I'm guesting in my friend's uh, shops. But when I'm in Japan, I, I don't do fine line black and gray. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I do it's, fine line black, fine line black and gray in a different type of setup, you know, where it's a very private session. Yeah. And I can be fully focused only on what's going on with my client, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when I I go to Japan, it's more on a tattooy tip, you know, where I'm more. It's more like it's another side of tattooing, really, you know. And uh, uh, I used to travel like crazy, bro. I used to travel like crazy. It was insane. I mean, it was just for me. Um, I'm so grateful for the art of tattooing because it allowed me to travel all around the world. And, and due to the fact that I, I was doing very well and I'm still doing very well for myself, um, it allows me to go pretty much anywhere, drop a pin in the, in the map, and there'll always be people that will be down to meet me wherever I'm at to get tattooed. And then I'll make it an excuse to stay an extra 15, 20 days and bring all my friends along with me and, and we're yeah. all traveling together. Yeah. Yeah. Just make a, 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 a fun time of it as well as, as, as tattooing. Yeah, man. Sick. But, but you know, like, uh, I'll tell you something, bro. I receive a lot of messages from people asking me how about, because this thing used to be called the show, you know? I don't know if yeah, you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, uh, bro. I remember. Yeah. So I, I was traveling all around, uh, all around the world and tattooing along the way, but Bro, this is like very tiring, bro, because all this is like some hardcore uh, condition for tattooing because I never had a bed. I never had a, a a proper lamp or a printer and it made every day a goddamn mission, you know, mm -hmm. and it was fun for the time being. But now I came to a point where I, I just like to travel for the sake of it. You know, I, I don't yeah. have to tattoo, you know, yeah. I just wanted to show this to people on video, show how life could be fun, you know, but yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, you created some insane art in those conditions as well like you 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 never had like a, a solid base as such and you still you still killed it like you still created some Thanks, crazy bro. pieces like i remember watching i remember watching a video years ago when you did that back piece on your friend is, is he called nico is it nico yeah 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 he, he's a tattooist too he's very good yeah so at that time he was your apprentice right yeah 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 and he it's um, hard to say my apprentice because he's like one of my best friend i grew right, up with yeah. but i i guess i showed him how i do things you know yeah yeah and you tattooed his back in in india on a on a river wasn't yeah. it yeah that's crazy yeah. man. it was, that was brutal sick. bro awesome <laughs> yeah but it's good content really really good content i thank you man i thought of it the other day like you don't even understand the madness to get this like generator on a boat to make this happen and i was thinking about it i was like if it was today, bro, like I'll have a goddamn wireless <laughs> pen and it'd be so easy, you know. But yeah. at the moment when we we started to do like those tattoo sessions, those tattoo sessions outdoor, it was very hard to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried the Acus tattoo machine? Yeah, Yeah, man. Big shout out to you for plugging me in and having them blessing me with a machine. I mean, it's it's a great machine, bro. Like, honestly, I was I was very, very surprised. Do you really know what? Super solid. Yeah, that that was my my thing as well because I think the create the the creators of that machine were at Shein, Um and I think they yeah. they invented the um the Soul Nova and like the pen style machines that Shayan did. I think don't take that as gospel. 
if I've got that wrong, but I, I'm I'm pretty sure those th- those guys ca- came away and um and create created Acus as a brand, and I think yes. I so think when you told be... me this at first, I was a little skeptical because I used to be sponsored by Cheyenne, mm. and eventually I I sort of left the brand because I, I just felt like I didn't really like the way the machine was working at some point. Yeah. So I was like, I was thinking, is this gonna be working like Cheyenne? But I have a whole different system like a hammer you know in the cam and that makes that that particular machine that Acus machine work so good and i mean i gave it a full full test right now because i used it for fine line black and gray with my style you know yeah and i also i also like di- used it for to outline a full back piece in japanese work which is like super bold outlines and i also did some uh solid black and gray packing for large scale japanese so the full uh, I, I tried it for everything besides color packing. Yeah. But I mean, like in every areas of tattooing, uh, it was performing very well. Yeah. Do you do you do you change? Do you know when you work? Do you change your vaults uh, as you're as you're working? Do you, or do you just stick at the same vault? Um, when it's a new machine, I'm I'm constantly experimenting, you know, because I, I I I'm I'm trying to, especially this machine. The craziest thing is that you can change the motor too. Yeah. That like yeah. That's how, why how, I was like, wow. Yeah. So how, like, how uh, depending is. on the way it's set, I might really like it or I might not like it, you know. But the moment I find the way it works for me, I try to, I tend to stick to it. But obviously, if, I'll I'll say one thing, bro. Like for for fine line black and gray, I don't really need to change much. It's pretty much always set the same ways. Yeah. When I do like Japanese work, especially large scale, I mean, when when you're doing a full back piece that includes the buttocks area, I mean, there is moments where you have to crank that shit up, you know. So yeah, depend what type of tattooing. Yeah. What? Um, How about you? You change you? You change? Yeah. So I've tried. Like for me, like in in terms of tattooing, I suppose like I'm always I'm always trying to progress myself. I'm always trying to get better. Um, and I think one of the things that I tend to do is spend stupid amounts of money on uh, different machines to see if it makes my work a bit smoother. A bit because there's there's so many different cams, there's so many different motors, strengths, and stuff like that. And um, mm-hmm. I'm constantly changing my my setup up, like to try and get better, I suppose. And I mm-hmm. think um, one thing I found with the Acus is is again like like you said was the uh the motor you can change the motor and it's so simple to use as well like there's there's these machines like the um flight nano elite from inkjector and they they they've got so many different rods and and you ch- you you turn the rod like a quarter way and it gives it a different strength and it's like so confusing to try and get a, the right setup for yourself um but yeah no this this machine but i hear you on buying a lot of machines bro i mean i'm a big coil guy you know i have a lot of coils machine you yeah know? Have, and- have you um have you tried uh oh, was norm r.i.p R. to norm but have you tried norm's machine r.i.p to norm bro this good ass guy man yeah Sick uh guy. bro like it's uh, it, it's uh the the last time i saw norm he said like i'm gonna send you some machines and that wasn't to it, it's not so long after that that he passed away you know yeah, so i never got to receive my machines from norm uh i used to have some when i started tattooing and they're really good but i bro i experienced so many coils coil machines i mean i, I almost had like a sort of um, addiction to them where like a, constantly looking for the new thing but coil machines are they're awesome the only thing is about the only issues is consistency with them, you know. Yeah. So you have to. So keep that can be up. very frustrating. Yeah. 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 I I just recently moved back to rotaries because I was doing, I was in and out with like rotaries and coils for a while because I was traveling a lot, and then when I became more present in the shop in the studio here and stuff, I I moved I fully moved back to coils, and then eventually in japan i started struggling with coils too much and i moved back to rotary yeah. and i started to get pen style and the moment i started to use them wireless thing i was like man shit this this hits you know even though i hate it because i have this little a little bit like old school mentality sometimes where i'm like yo tattooing is supposed to be noisy the machine is start is supposed to shake in your hand and yeah and it's and all that you know but eventually i was using this i was like man i feel so much more relaxed at the end of the day i feel so much freer and 
it, it's all worth it. And in the end of the day, those are just tools, you know, that's why I use the iPad. That's why I, I use wireless machines, but the Acus is a very good one. You're part of the pro team, right? Yeah, yeah. I um, they sent they they sent one out for me, and um, I tried it, and I was I was because I get loads of messages uh, about brands and stuff trying to just yeah yeah have like the exposure me I too. guess. And um, sure. I was like, Do you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. So they sent sent it out, and because I, I I'm I'm a massive Bishop fan. So I've I've had Bishops for years. I think my first tattoo machine was a Bishop as well. It's a V6, I think it was. Uh -huh. And um, so you never used coils, bro. I never used coils. Never. Don't don't. Well, there's no point for you trying it. It's. I think if, I mean, just for giggles. But I think if you'd never used coils, bro, it's uh It's, it's hard. A little, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's so much mechanics involved, and I'll, I'll say, bro, like if if you were to start tattooing tomorrow, I'll like recommend you to use coils because there's a. I almost think there's a deeper understanding of the skin that goes along with using coils. Yeah. And it will put you in a lot of tricky situations that will force you to figure some things out. But if if you never use them, I mean, there's no point in turning back to them because it's just so much more complicated in a yeah. sense, you know? Yeah. yeah. So so one guy that I, I'm a massive fan of as well is Eric Masinazin, who you've tattooed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to him, bro. I mean, I, I, when I was living in the States, I... Uh, it, it was cool to spend time with him. You know, I learned a lot as far as business and uh, marketing identity and also his style, bro. I mean, I, I think at this point, you know, there's like some tattooers that really impacted the tattoo game and he's one of those. And Facts. there's new people out there that pretty much do a, a watered down version of his work and don't even know really where it comes from. But he's the, the one that put this on the map. Yeah, he's, um, he's quite a sec secretive guy because I've... I think he was probably the you and him was was the the people that I looked up to to the most. Um, it's just his. Obviously, you've got way way different styles, but black and grey, like the the smoothness he gets is is crazy. So smooth, yeah. and I I just I, I would love to go and see him tattoo, but he's just he's just so hard to get to get hold of. I think I mean he hasn't posted anything on his socials for time, but he uses yeah, calls as well. I think. He, he use what? Coils as well. I think he uses coils. Yeah, yeah. He uses uh, machines from Kevin Riley coils. I Kevin used to Riley. use these machines for quite a bit too. Sick. I mean, like, I don't, bro. I, to be honest, I haven't even talked to Eric in a while. The last time I saw him, it was actually in London. Was it? And uh, we were talking, and it was very cool, bro. Like, we, we, I mean, we cool, you know. So it was very good to see him, and um, I haven't really talk to him in a while bro yeah i think like him and me we kind of step away a little bit from social media and all that you know i think you have to as well i think like there's there's times where but i think the thing the thing with social media if you do step off it's so hard to to get the algorithm back in your favor do you know you know what i mean yeah man i mean like i i, I used to literally post pictures i'll get like fifteen thousand likes and it'll be like so like my work was so exposed and i think i stopped posting for like one year at a time or like mm. I, I i literally didn't post anymore just because i didn't really um i i i don't know bro like black and gray has a lot of like commercial work and sometimes you'll do some of your work and you'll see this is hard to explain it's a weird feeling where it, it's almost like it's not really ripping off your work because I, I don't really care if some people get inspired and stuff. We all been there. I've done that too, you know, yeah. so it's part of the game, but it, it it's just like, I didn't really have the motivation or you kind of feel like you've put a lot of work out there and now you, your clients are asking for sort of the same things and you're thinking, finding ways to, I, I want to show different stuff, you know? Yeah. So I think that's probably what happened with Eric. I think like last time I talk, I mean, he was he didn't really care about posting anything you know he has his clients he's doing his job is is improving on his own and mm. who knows maybe at some point he's gonna pull up and fuck got them slap us in, a, in the <laughs> face with some new <laughs> yeah. new styles and shit but at, at that point i think it doesn't really matter but if he did post right now even though he has a huge following i mean probably lots of people won't see his work because yeah. the way the algorithm works you know yeah yeah it's crazy um just going into to your techniques again um what's yeah. your aftercare tips for when you finish the tattoo 
What was say that again, please? What's your aftercare tips for when you um, finish the tattoo? How, what do you tell I your mean, client to do? I I recommend people to dry heal. You know, just put nothing on them. Really? Just put nothing on it. Yeah, because I feel like the moment people start to put very thick ointments or whatnot, I mean, literally they clog the pores of their skin, and I, I don't think it's the best way for the body to heal because it doesn't retain so much ink. I, I do feel that if the tattoo is properly done, you just have to do nothing on it. Just literally just do nothing. And after five, six days, when it starts to be like real dry and peel off, you can help it out with some regular lotion or some something yeah. like that. Yeah, sick, sick. What's your, uh, you, don't, you don't have to say, but I think I saw a video of, of, uh, of how much you cost a day to tattoo someone. And I think it's 5,000. I think you talk about it in, in your video, so I, I I'll keep a question mark. And if people want to investigate, they <laughs> yeah. can investigate. But it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not cheap. That's a fact, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. But, I mean, uh, if, I, think, I, I think I saw a video because I, um, I think you was in a car with someone. I think it was, was it Levi Bentley? Levi Bentley? Yeah, I think. probably. I think he was speaking to you in a car and you said, I think you, I think you was like 5,000 or whatever um but like people will pay it do you know what i mean like people yeah you, you you keep sticking it up and and if it's if it's good work it's it's worth that because like you said i think you're not just looking to to get a piece for the picture you're looking to get the the healed thing so yeah i mean for me i mean i can tell you a little bit about pricing and what i think about all that you know mm. i mean there's always going to be people that going to be unsatisfied with how much you charge, you know, and when they hear some people charging very high price point, like like Eric or maybe Mr. Cartoon or uh, I don't know what guy is charging a lot, like Bang Bang or like this type of guys or like myself, you know, and they're going to say like, oh, it's not worth it. I can have this so and so do the same quality of work uh, for maybe five times cheaper or yeah. then go to these people, you know, because the people saying this is the client that we're not trying to get, you know, mm -hmm. we, we're trying to. Uh, get a, a clientele that will want to go the extra mile to pay the extra price and I appreciate you in that shape or form but it's always about va what value you bring to people if people like really value your work the experience the way it's going to heal and and if they think it's worth it they'll pay for it so you don't de actually you can put your price out there I can say I charge a hundred thousand per session tomorrow and if nobody comes to get tatted then that means that my work is not is not on the marketplace the value of my work is not it you know mm. but let's say if tomorrow you say you charge 2000 a day you know and and there is which is already a very high price point and you're getting fully booked at that price it means that the marketplace value you this price yeah. so only the people that cannot afford you will think that you're stupid and blah 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 but the other people that pay you actually thinks it's fair so it's kind of a game where you, you can decide your price, but you don't decide whether it's going to work or not, you know? And I, to all these tattooists that charge a lot of money, they, they didn't come out of nowhere, um, you know, like starting to charge like very high price point. It took time to build that, to get there, you know? Yeah. Now, now the, the thing is, I mean, you have to market yourself. You have to know how to pitch yourself, sell yourself, you know? And, um, yeah, man, I mean, th there is six billion humans in this planet or, if, or seven, I don't know. So there will be some people that are willing to pay expensive for tattoos. There's yeah. people that, some people that don't want to pay expensive for tattoos will buy very expensive sneakers or will buy cars that are like super expensive. But a tattoo is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. So yeah. it, it all depends on what point of view. And now there's another component nowadays is that there's so many people tattooing that also do good work, but that don't value their work. Or that have a, they're very good at tattooing, but with a very generic style. Because nowadays, if you're good at tattooing, but your style is very average in a sense, it's gonna be hard to charge a lot of money. You I know? think you I have fall to have something that. that make you stand out. You know? I, I, yeah, I think I fall into that because I, I, I think I'm a good tattooist, but I think because my style is very generic, I think I really need to work on um, design elements and just making it super different for for people to want. Um, to want that kind of well to pay the price really because i'm i'm super yeah. cheap right now in terms yeah, bro, of like, yeah people. so this is i'll tell you what like you being super cheap is not good for you and it's not good for the industry period because mm. if there's many good people like you that start to like charge very cheap prices i mean now it becomes the new average you know 
And some people, some customers might hate me that watch your video for saying this, but if all the good people were saying like, we don't tattoo for less than that, that would become the new standard and yeah. people will appreciate the work more as well. But nowadays there's a lot of good people that do work for cheap, you know, and, and then yeah. it's, uh, oh, he's doing cheaper than me. So maybe I should do cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And now at the end, you're going to end up being a very good tattooist and doing the price of someone that's not that good you know yeah but the thing to separate yourself from most people it's definitely to work on style, style because style well. will make you unique you know that's yeah. what makes you unique i mean there's probably plenty of people that now can tattoo like me as far as technique you know but but the style is something different so some of this um quote-unquote high-end clients because i think all clients are you got to respect and appreciate any clients, but some of yeah. the ones that are like striving for a little more, looking a little deeper to have something unique and they're willing to pay the extra price. They're looking more, I think at styles, you know? Mm. I think as well, like, um, so I suppose it's going to help a lot of people, um, beginners, especially. So how, what would you, what would you, um, give tips for, for getting new clientele? Would you, would you, work on style would you work on promotion like paying for posts on instagram whatever like how I, I think... how have you how how did you because i because when i put my price up i struggled to get to get clientele because i i was i was 800 pound a day um before and then there was there were people paying it because i i did work of that standard but then i had to drop it down because I was just getting less and less clientele and I was like it's a bro, very bad hard. move bro bad move dog it's you know hard. I mean I mean for for my perspective I tell you like if uh, there is covid and there is no client and whatever do you think like apple is going to make the iphone cheaper no yeah 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 exactly so no, that, that it's, it's already a bad message that you're sending to yourself like oh I'm not getting busy I don't have client I got to put my price down you the quality of your work didn't didn't um, decrease you know yeah. it means you have to maybe like uh work better like market yourself better you mm. you see what i'm saying but yeah. there's people out there that are willing to pay you 800 pounds a day they probably just didn't discover you yeah. so i i feel uh, in your case it's about marketing you know yeah and also uh, high production you know like you have to stay productive so you're you're gonna tell me like oh maybe if you don't have clients, how could you be productive? So in that case, just like pick a guinea pig, someone that you appreciate and just blast him up, you know, mm. tattoo the shit out of him and he becomes your walking canvas. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that, yeah. gi that gives you, that gives you a skin and stuff to show so you can display your skills. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But in, in the end, you're better off like tattooing less, but charging your regular price. Or yeah. the price that you, that you had, then doing a lot of tattoos, and eventually you're almost gonna be resentful for it. You're gonna have to overwork yourself, and 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 you know when you charge a lot of money, bro. I mean, you really literally put your all you got in every single tattoos. You know, I don't not to sound cocky or arrogant, but I don't mess up tattoos. You know, there is yeah. no like off days. There is no days where I. I I don't perform well, you know. Yeah. I show up. I know why people come to me. I feel very appreciated. I'm very grateful uh, for my cu customer, and I I give it my all in every single tattoo sessions that I do, you know. Yeah. Um. It's but it's, it's, it's the experience, isn't it? Experience and also it's it's like um this is so so different many components, you know. Like when you charge a lot of money to, I mean, you send a message to yourself that your work is worth that price, so you have to match up that standards and the people the that are coming to see you, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have to like charge a lot of money. I mean, like it it, it it's no charge a lot, or don't charge, but it's just whatever you tell yourself, you should be paid. I mean, like you have to try to stick to it, bro. You can't can't do the yo yo with yeah. your your prices you know i know but I, I i just feel like that was the 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 only move i could have done uh in terms of because i was struggling for money man like i was i was like i think every day is a a hustle as well like this you know i think maybe lifestyle as well as um needs needs to take a hit like all that shit. Bro, i see a lot of yeezys on the side you yeah. know so <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean if you have a you know it's, it's crazy like it's just priorities the, the, isn't it the older I get, the the less money I spend in a way, you know, my, mm. and, and the more I become smart, I guess, with my money. But 
Uh, I understand that point, you know, because I used to be pretty wild with my spendings. Yeah. But um, another option too, I mean, you can literally have your career as um, the black and gray tattooist and you have the price that are fixed and you can also be like doing um, um, street style tattooing where it's you doing walkings and whatnot and you, you have a, a regular fare, you know, yeah. like you, you, you charge a regular price. I don't know what's a regular price in the UK, but let's say if it's uh, 80 pounds an hour or I don't know what it is, 50 pounds an hour or, or whatever, but you bang every goddamn tattoo that walks through the door. Yeah. That could be a thing too. So in one, in one sense, you protect your brand and you keep building on, on that level because there is waves of clients, ups and downs, you know? Yeah. Nowadays with COVID, like definitely there's less clients than before. People don't have as much money to splurge, but you can still like build it back up. And in the other side, you do every tattoos that come through. And by doing like small tattoos and, and regular types of tattooing, you'll see that you improve your tattooing overall because you just become better of a craftsman, you know? Yeah, yeah um yeah no yeah i fully 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 understand that so so i'm gonna ask you two two more questions because i know you have to shoot but um what's All what's good, the what's the tip for beginner tattooists coming in to the industry what what would your advice be to them i'll tell them to actually don't be in the game for the money because when i started my motivation never was money mm -hmm. my Same. motivation was just like becoming good out of like just become a good tattooist because I had so much passion for it. I'll tell them to get very obsessed with it. I, like back in the days, there was MySpace, you know, and I was at least checking out MySpace for five hours a day, just yeah. looking at pictures. Uh, I'll tell them to practice a lot. I mean, there's there's not so many things you can do. You know, you, if if you want to stand out, you gotta do what most people don't do and try to uh, do what people you like are doing. And the people that are doing well are usually practicing like crazy. Yeah. You know, they're constantly practicing. They're tr constantly trying to improve themselves. But if now, like I say, with social media, I mean, there's a whole thing that goes with tattooing where, it, I don't know, like this image a little bit of like a, it's almost like a rap star or some shit, yeah. you know? And I mean, if you get in it for these reasons, you're probably not going to do so well because it takes a lot of time before to to actually make a, a decent living of tattooing. And it will take even more time if you're trying to step up to that different uh, level of, you know, recognition and whatnot. So yeah. first advice is like just be in it because you love it and have fun with it and practice a lot. Would you practice on fake skin? Have you ever tattooed fake skin? I've uh, never tattooed face skin. I saw my friend Sergio tattooing face skin. I took the machine. I did a line. I was like, what the hell is that? Man? <laughs> I mean, like literally when I got my tattoo machines, I bought like uh, uh, grapefruits and I think I tattooed them for 30 minutes and I was like, man, I can be doing this shit. This is definitely, the skin is not going to be like that. So the following day, I already tattooed someone. I already yeah. tattooed a friend of mine. Um, but the game has changed, bro. You know, when I start, started 13 years ago and, and starting in USA, everything was different. Mm -hmm. Now there are so many informations. The, the tattoo machines are so good and everything is so convenient and you can have fake skins. I mean, whatever works, you know? Yeah. I'll say for me, it's more about um, uh, your mindset more than anything. If, you're, if you really believe that you're going to become a tattooist and it's not just a phase of your life and you're 100% committed to this craft and, and you understand that your motivation is not necessarily the money or make a living out of it, but is just to actually become a very good tattooist, then all the other things is going to come along yeah. on its own. Yeah. You know, I've never really think about everything that's, ha that's had happened in my career. I I've never really planned it like that it was more i just want to focus on tattooing yeah and so i will say if fake skin works for you if it's something that you feel helps you out why not you know mm. yeah and what? draw bro drawing, drawing. I, I, actually i know you don't draw man but I, don't I still do believe that drawing is uh that's how you develop style yeah yeah i think i, I think i think because i've missed that step in my career and i've just gone straight into tattooing people 
Um, I, I I didn't tattoo fake skin either in the beginning. I I just tattooed my legs. You know, I tattooed my legs up. I I, I tattooed my brother-in-law um, as a guinea pig just for for skin. And um, yeah, that's that's how I started it. But I, but I I pick I picked it up quite quickly. Um, uh, I got, yeah, I mean, like, like quite quite quick and stuff. Like some that. some people like go they get good very fast you know mm. uh, if it's your case that's great i mean like you're doing great tattooing and and you've been tattooing for eight years you said eight nine years, years yeah eight years yeah yeah i mean some people it take them a lifetime and they can't figure it out you know mm. and, how long have you some been people within two huh how long have you been tattooing i think i'm going on 13 years 13 wow yeah yeah, yeah. so Sick. but now i feel it's kind of like starting tattooing all over again because I've for the 11 or 10 first years of, I never done color, you know. The oh, moment yeah. I, I I walked in doing color, I I thought I was super confident, like confident, you know. I was thinking I got this. I know how to tattoo, blah 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 blah. I mean, <laughs> when I first did color, bro, I literally destroy the person I was tattooing. I mean, it's a whole different. Have you done colors? I've done it's super messy. It's very very messy. Um, yeah, but there's like messy and like the way to pack it and yeah. and, and just it's, Cause it's different, a, bro. Like, because there's there's a way to do it, isn't there? Because I got taught very briefly um, to do mid tones first, then to do dark. No, then yeah, then to do darks, then lights. Or is it? Or is it from dark to light? I, I don't know, because like there's different school too. I mean, someone that does like realism and color probably have yeah. literally total different technique. But yeah. when it comes to color, I do very traditional tattooing, you know. So Japanese tattooing, in a sense, is like American traditional. And the way I I was taught was um, to do the darkest colors first, and then yeah. you go to light, you know. Yeah. But this I had no clue before. I thought it was like black and red. So yeah. I literally like start by packing white and then I'll do some blue after that and totally fuck everything up, you know, or yeah. even that. I mean, I thought packing color was like packing black, but in a way it's not, you know, mm. I mean, like it's, a lot it's very hard to make to tattoo color that after when you see it healed is it looks beautiful, bright and solid, you know, yeah. so so for me, it's like relearning tattooing for the two the past two, three years being able to do perfect bold outlines flush and constantly consistently like uh, solid work yeah so you're always learning with tattooing right mm -hmm. so um last question bro what have you got going Tell on me. for the future what's uh, what's happening in the future um for you? Any so plans? i'm i'm uh, i'm starting to stream a lot bro I'm starting, I mean, starting to stream a lot. I stream twice, but that's my plan, you know. St <laughs> yeah. I'm starting on Twitch. Um, what are you streaming? St streaming? I, I'm like, uh, right now, it's mostly like talking at the moment. Cool. The other day I streamed, I was drawing on the iPad. So I, I streamed my screen so people can see a, how I sketch and how I do things. Sick. And then I'll probably be reacting to tattoos. And eventually I'm going to branch out to some different things. I don't want it to be only tattoo related, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm doing it all in French for now, you know. Okay, yeah, and I'm yeah. also, um, I recently opened a tattoo shop over here in France, in Bordeaux, so, uh, with my partner Nico, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, a semi-private studio, which means that uh, we take in new clients and there is like artists available for walk-ins. But um, we also have like really private, almost like mini shops within the shops. So that's where I receive my clientele. Yeah. Uh, so I'm doing this. Uh, so I'm going to be traveling to Toronto and also like going back to Japan. I have a lot of clients out there. I mean, I, I still uh, do a lot of uh, black and gray, but I'm also doing a lot of Japanese work and I'm constantly painting. I have many projects, bro. I might release some prints. I might release some merch and I'm starting to, I'm going back on YouTube, uh, but it's going to be in French, but yeah. I'm pretty sure like for English speakers, you can hit the captions or whatnot. So yeah, you'll yeah. be able to understand. Sick. Yeah. Well, dude, this has been fun. It's been an honor to have you on the channel. Um, thank you for having me, bro. Me, so, yeah, thank you very much, mate. And um, yeah, I will see you soon. Hopefully, I'll I'll have to come over to France, bro. Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. We'll have you over at the shop and just catch a vibe and whatnot. Hundred percent, sick, bro. You got it, bro.